talked about a little bit earlier about determination, not taking the first no. And I think that's such a an amazing quality. It's something that I would I I, I can say that I think our generation needs to to really hammer that inside of ourselves. Because like I said before, some of you guys are the the pioneers. You guys had paved a way. And that was through grit and grind. That was taking no for an answer, but doing it in a in a really sensible way, in my opinion. Um, and that leads me to uh, this question, and you kind of touched upon that, that there's always there's obstacles along the way whenever you want to accomplish anything because you can't have 100% yes. Otherwise, you know, that, that's not how life works either, and, and it shouldn't work like that. So, and, and I know over the pandemic, there was a point where you're, where the company tried to get permission and funding from the, from the Trudeau government, uh, if I'm not mistaken, because I think we were, we were looking into that as well. And um, for us, it was more of a, it was a more of a, a Canadian pride thing that, you know, we could have it manufactured right here in Canada. And, and of course, it was in my riding, so I, why wouldn't we want that? And, and you know, it, it's still a sense of pride that a Canadian company is stepping up to do that. Um, can you go over some of the, the hurdles or some of the, the other remedies or what, what caused the denial and, and where it went from there? So, and, and talk about how you overcame that obstacle. Yeah, so going back to two years ago, so, you know, April two years ago is about the time when we developed the vaccine. And it looked like Moderna was getting a lot of support in America. BioNTech was getting a lot of support in, uh, in Europe uh, for, for their uh, vaccines. There, we had a number of things going against us. One, we weren't a known quantity. We'd been quite quiet about what we were doing, in part because we were just working away, doing our thing, and we had just enough money to get us across the finish line with our first clinical trials or, and get it started anyway with our clinical trials in cancer. And we had a strategy around how to, to fund that. Uh, so we weren't out you know, waving the flag and saying, hey, here's a Canadian company who's got messenger RNA. First of all, two years ago, nobody knew what messenger mm-hmm. RNA was. That's they didn't right. care. And, 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 and we were a small Western uh, entity, although we'd done a lot of most of our clinical, our, our trial work, and the, the science was done at, uh, in Toronto at the, one of the major cancer hospitals in the world. And so we... Um, so we had going against us, one, we were an unknown quantity, uh, not really well known in, in Canada, not well known in the scientific and academic communities, uh, although we had very strong ties with some academicians in Calgary and in Toronto. Um, secondly, uh, the government was really focused on what's the best possible way to get as much vaccine in Canada as soon as possible. And they they made a strategic decision, which... You know, I'm okay with it's. It's uh, the strategic decision was we don't see anything in Canada that can come to the market as quickly as like a Moderna or a Pfizer can because those are big boys. They've got a lot of resources behind them from other governments, um, and so the, there's the Canada Canada strategy was go out and buy as much as you can and hope that some of it works. Well, it worked. The strategy was was very good. It worked. Um, it didn't take into account the potential for developing and strengthening the Canadian vaccine capacity and our own scientific uh, backbone in the country quite as much as it mm-hmm. might have. But you know what? <laughs> There's, I, I, I give a lot of leeway to anybody who's been a leader through the, through the pandemic. It's been yes. difficult. And uh, people have made their best decisions based upon the best advice they had at the moment that they did it. And I'm okay with that. Uh, in our case, we, we struggled a bit, but we did get support from the National Research Council for Phase One Clinical Trials. Um, and, and we were kind of marched along in a process that where we really had to prove ourselves at each step to get su- the support for the next step. And you know what? Uh, that's not a bad management of public resources to to uh, strengthen the vaccine capacity in Canada. At the end of this, uh, we're going to have, you know, with messenger RNA and the capacity that we're building between Providence Therapeutics in Calgary and Northern RNA in, in Calgary, um, we're going to have world-class vaccine 
uh, development and manufacturing capacity. And in many ways, we're probably uh, uh, shortening the supply chain uh, as well because we're, we're bringing it into Canada. We're creating the capacity. There are certain elements, like constituent elements of uh, vaccines for messenger RNA. When this started, there were only two sources. One was in China and one was in Switzerland. And, and, and we're now diversifying that supply chain so that we can uh, never again face the kind of uh, you know supply chain issues that everybody's faced on just about everything, but particularly around vaccines. <laughs>